Okay, Sierra, you can do this. You're a pharmacist. You went to school for what, six years? You can do this. You're a medication expert. That's why you went to school. You're an amazing pharmacist. Now, go take care of some patients. Welcome back to Happy Farm Life. I'm Sierra Richard. I am a recent pharmacy graduate and I want to help you transition from student to pharmacist because I just lived it and I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. In this video, I'm just going to give you a little bit of advice I wish somebody would have given me or I would have done sooner. And my first piece of advice is to find a mentor. If you haven't already, it could be a preceptor. If you are a resident, it could be another recent grad that has lived this and it could be another pharmacist where you work, but you need somebody to turn to for advice because you're going to need help. You are a new pharmacist and while you learned a lot in school, there's a lot to learn and having somebody that's willing to walk you through the steps or be there that you can ask questions to. Sometimes there's just weird questions that come up and you need somebody to ask. Obviously you don't want to do this all the time but occasionally it happens and I've seen seasoned pharmacists go to their own mentors for these types of questions so you really want to have that somebody that you can go to. And don't be afraid to ask for help because we all need it especially as you're transitioning you need to ask those questions early so you're not in a bad position later on when they think you know what you're doing, but you never ask those questions up front. Next is a hard truth, but they told you this in pharmacy school. I'm going to tell it to you again. At some point, you are going to make a mistake. Yes, even you. We are all human. That includes you. And so at some point in time, you're going to make a mistake and you just really hope that it doesn't get to a patient and it doesn't cause harm. But anytime a mistake happens or a near miss happens, you need to learn from that. That's the most important thing is anytime there's a mistake or you almost make a mistake, you need to learn from it, do better, and remember you're human. If there's a systematic error that's out there, work to fix the system. If it's something that you did, learn so you don't do that again. You need to do your due diligence and always put patience first. Which brings me to my next point, which is look everything up. Yep, I said it. If you are slightly unsure, you're about to give that medication to a patient, you no longer have a double check, look it up. We are all human. You are human. Here's the thing. There are 20,000 medications, according to the FDA, that are available for market here in the U.S., and that doesn't include all the herbal supplements and other things that are coming down the pipeline that you need to know about. And the thing is, you can't know every little thing about every single medication. That's literally impossible. I personally use the Lexicomp app on my phone. Oh my gosh, it is a lifesaver. I don't know what I would do without it. It is worth every single penny to have that ready to go in your pocket. I can tell you when I started my residency, I had to look like all the doses up. I was staffing in the emergency department and I cannot tell you the number of times I looked up the dose for dexamethasone for an asthma exacerbation for kids because everything's weight-based and I didn't have the weight-based memorized. And you know what? I don't know how many times I looked it up, but I can tell you that I haven't had to look it up since before Christmas because eventually I learned it. That repetition is going to get you where you need to go because eventually you're going to look at that dose enough that you're going to remember it and you're not going to have to look it up anymore. I don't have to look up half the doses I verified now because I see them so frequently and I look them up over and over and over again. I have them memorized. Be patient with yourself. You're going to get there. You're not going to be the most amazing pharmacist in the world the second you roll out of pharmacy school. That's unrealistic. If you take the time, to look up the doses, you take the time to learn from everything that you're doing right out of the gate, you're gonna get there and you're gonna be great. My next tip is on the flip side, which means you do know some things. Let's be honest, you went to school for six years, so it's not like you came out with nothing. You have a good amount of knowledge in your brain, so use it and be confident in that. The thing is, even if you're a new pharmacist, anytime you're talking to patients, anytime you're talking to physicians or other healthcare providers, you need to be confident in what you know. This is something that's very hard. I was not confident in my knowledge whenever I started to study for the boards. Oh my gosh, I was a hot mess. I was worried about things that I knew, but I felt like I needed to read the chapter in RX Prep. But the thing is like, that's not true at all. I am gonna do a video about Naplex Prep because I ended up scoring in triple digits and I was fine, but I was freaking out for no reason. So. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications so you don't miss that. But my point here is that you can ruin relationships very quickly with providers and patients if you're not confident in the things that you know. So make sure you look it up, 
but then give them an answer confidently. I mean, after all, you do have your doctorate. You worked hard for that. So be proud of that and the knowledge that you gained through that degree. And speaking of providers, here's another thing I wish I would have done earlier. Here's my piece of advice. The second you walk through the door at the new place that you are working, start building relationship with the nurses, the doctors, Whatever providers you are working with, whether that is respiratory therapist, PAs, I mean, the list can go on and on and on because the thing is they are going to be the people that you are going to learn from and work with and they are on your team. This does not matter if you're in retail. This does not matter if you're working in a hospital because you need to build those relationships and you need to build them soon because one, you're going to learn from them. I have learned so much from the other providers, probably as much as I've learned from my preceptors from other healthcare providers, which is awesome. And the more that you build that relationship, the better off patients are gonna be and the better off you're gonna be because not only are you learning a lot, but they're gonna start coming to you with questions and they're going to want your advice. I now get emails and just quick messages. We have Skype where I work and I'll get Skype messages even in a unit that I'm not on because the physicians know me and they trust my advice and my clinical judgment. So that is how you build that rapport and that is needing to start the second you walk through the door don't wait to do that. Start it immediately. The next piece of advice is another thing I kind of flubbed up on. Flubbed? Is that a word? Anywho, it is to stay connected. So what do I mean by that? Whenever I was in pharmacy school, I was super involved in pharmacy organizations. I absolutely loved them. I got my best friends from there. I got some of the best memories I had in school. And then I moved to Texas and started residency and got busy and it fell to the wayside. And part of the way through the year, I realized that I was missing something and it was that involvement because I loved policy and advocacy so much and I wasn't doing that. And it definitely affected me in my personal life because that was some of the fire that kept me going and motivated me. But I had removed that part of my life. So don't do that. It's really easy to do. You get even more busy whenever you leave school. At least you do if you start residency. And it can be very easy to cut that out, but don't do it. So after I realized this, I actually got more involved in a local organization and it helped me not only get that fire back, but it also helped me gain more mentors and connections and networking opportunities that I would never have had before. And it has been so worth it. So don't let that go by the wayside. Because like I said, those were my best friends and memories and that doesn't end when you graduate. Before I tell you my biggest tip, I wanna tell you some of the things that I've learned about myself through this. You know, I have learned really what it means to be a pharmacist because you get an idea in school, but it takes it to a whole new level when you have your patient's life in your hands and you have that responsibility and you're the person taking care of them. And that is both terrifying and extremely rewarding. It really has shown me what I'm capable of and that I can do this. I can be a good pharmacist. I'm going to get there. But it also has taught me to take my time and be patient with myself because it's going to take time to be that amazing pharmacist that has a great relationship with our patients who has been there for 5, 10, 15 years and has all of that knowledge in their brain. You have to get there, but look up to those mentors. Find somebody that has really done that with their life and then go for it. Okay, now for my last tip. This one is the big one. Never stop learning. Yeah, you probably heard this one in pharmacy school too, but I can tell you, I literally learn something every single day that I go to work. It is applying directly to patients, patients that I wanna work with in the future. It's really what I wanna do with my life, and that is so incredibly powerful. Don't underestimate that. The thing is your learning does not end with pharmacy school by any means. If anything, it should grow exponentially and it doesn't have to just be in pharmacy. I've personally created a book list that is going to help me both personally become a better person and a leader and have a better mindset and outlook on life, as well as how to be a better pharmacist and grow my finances and all of that adulting stuff that I put on hold while I was in pharmacy school, the covers you're seeing are on my reading list or I've already read. And, and the point of this is never stop learning, no matter if it's in pharmacy or not. And CE is something that you need to do. Get all that continuing education credit. That is great. But there is more to continued learning than just CE credit, just sitting down reading an article. You can do so much more and so much better than that. Because here's the truth, guys. If you commit to learning something new every single day, 
It is going to take you from student pharmacist to pharmacist to good pharmacist to great pharmacist so much faster than if you just go to work, la-di-da around, and don't try to learn anything new. I guess another bonus tip for you, never forget about the patients. They are the center of everything we're doing. And sometimes if you're not directly caring for them, that can be hard, but just remember to keep the patients in the center of your care at all times. For the students graduating this year, I know that things are difficult, that you're not getting the graduation that you imagined, but I encourage you to go take pictures in your graduation cap and gown. Still try to celebrate with family from a safe social distance. And remember that regardless of if you get to walk across that stage now or later or never, you're still a pharmacist and you are awesome because you did that. So congratulations class of 2020. All right, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss any future videos and I will see you all next time. Bye. Okay, let's be real for a second. My first day did not go like the mirror thing at the beginning. I honestly was like, where the heck do I park? I'm not sure that I ever figured that out.